Though the Mayfield is now a practice that takes up an entire plaza near downtown Tupelo, founder Kenneth Mayfield's road to success wasn't an easy one. It's a road he says started in his childhood, growing up as a black child in 1950s Mississippi. It was to be a second class citizen, no question about it. I, I graduated from a segregated uh, school. We had the hand-me-down books. Mm -hmm. So as uh, we didn't have any books that we had the original signature on them. A high-performing student, Mayfield's dreams for a better life grew stronger between his studies and working long days in the cotton field on his family's farm. And I saw the professionals on TV, mm -hmm. uh, the lawyers and the doctors, and I decided that I wanted to be a lawyer or a doctor. Eventually settling on a law degree, Mayfield graduated and went to college at Ole Miss. But instead of finding higher education, he found a voice for activism during the 60s fight for racial equality. By 1969, I had gotten involved in the movement at Ole Miss. Okay. And by 1970, I had gotten kicked out of Ole Miss. This guy mm -hmm. was our lawyer when we got uh, kicked out of the university. Booted from the school for participating in campus protests, Mayfield said he reluctantly left Oxford for Tougaloo College, a historically black college and university in Jackson. I couldn't see it at, when I was young. I really didn't see it. I just saw that if I went to Ole Miss, that was my stepping stone. And, and, and that's sort of like taking one little baby step to go to Tougaloo or I can step up and go to Ole Miss. And that's the way I looked at it. I don't see it that way now. Mayfield graduated early and completed his law degree in Michigan, but vowed to return to Mississippi to continue his work as a civil rights lawyer. Making good on his promise and coming back to Tupelo, Mayfield said his career hit a turning point sooner than he thought when he said he tried to rent office space for his first practice and the white secretary refused to service him. When I discussed it with my trainer, he said, well, if you feel that convinced, he said, uh, file your lawsuit. I said, okay. He eventually settled with the building owner and got the office space, but the lawsuit acted as a foundation for his practice, as Mayfield would go on to file lawsuits that led to the integration of several apartment complexes and buildings in the 70s and 80s. Still practicing today, Mayfield looks back at the progress made from his early days marching through campus to the Black Lives Matter protest in 2020. Most significant developments that occurred under the George Floyd movement was the state of Mississippi moved the Confederate battle flag from the state. Uh, Looking back on his life as a tough road traveled, but one he wouldn't do any other way. I made some missteps along the way, but uh, fortunately things worked out. In Tupelo, Sydney Darton, WTVA 9 News. Mayfield went on to write two books about his life. He said he hopes his story inspires people of all races to never give up the fight for an even playing field.